Hiya, and we're back again with another review. This time it's on Skullgrin. Personally, I find uh, the Decepticon Pretenders a lot, lot more interesting than the uh, Autobot ones. Because the Autobot ones are stuck with kind of human kind of shells, while the Decepticons get these very cool looking monster shells, which are a lot better in my opinion. You know, it, you're not going to be in any kind of disguise if you're in something like that. So, you know, if you're going to go with something, go with something that's quite large, bulky and scary with some kind of hardcore giant axe and big horns and spiky things. And he's got big ass knuckle dusters on as well, which is always cool. Um, nice big sword, better than the whip that uh, Cloudburst comes with, in my opinion. And also the, the top jaw head sort of moves left and right. Not really, though. It does move, but because of the way the, the body's molded, it doesn't move too far. Uh, and believe it or not, this bit right round here, there, that bit there, that is apparently the continuation of his mouth, which in my opinion isn't that good. I always pretend that it's just the white bit that's it, that is his head. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, it's not bad. And what I'd really like about this uh, this character is that this plastic here is made from the old school kind of Ghostbuster plastic, I think. If anyone had any of the Ghostbuster uh, ghost toys, they were made of some kind of squishy uh, plastic and also had a, a very uh, interesting smell that comes from it, which I personally like. I, it's like, I love the smell of gasoline. Don't worry, I'm not like any kind of pyromaniac yet. Well, saying that, I, I plan to do a video for YouTube where I set my Xbox on fire. And I plan to do a video as well where I set my uh, knockoff Devastator on fire, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's got a very nice smell, to, well, to his top of his head. I know that's a weird thing to say, but it's one of the things I like about him. Uh, the colours work quite well. Um, the head, mm, you, compared to like um, his Marvel comic days where he had a proper bull head, this is nothing like it, but it is similar to what he's like in a Master Force, so you know, you can't complain too much. So that is Skullgrin. Oh, what I should mention as well is, unlike, um, get this off, unlike Cloudburst, uh, Skullgrin has what I like to call a He-Man uh, styled belt, because they're the only toys I could remember that had this kind of um, slide it through. Oops slide it through that little bit and then you had to hook it onto there. I remember I had it with um, what's um, He-Man's cat thingy called Cringer or Battle Cat or maybe it's both, I can't remember. Uh, but again it's a lot more detailed I think. It, it looks a lot nicer than um, Cloud Bursts and also around the actual belt there are little skulls as well which is quite a nice feature. Uh, so we'll move on to Skullgrin um, himself in apparently a tank mode now, personally, I don't know what kind of tank has four, uh, two giant cannons on the side and then two quite big cannons on the top, but you know, it's quite cool. Um, not too fond of the purple and grey look to it though. I mean, it's alright, but it's, it's not grey. Uh, he does have little wheels on the bottom. He's a three-wheeler tank. Again, I'm not sure how good three-wheelers are, especially in, in tanks. But you know, he does look quite impressive. If you saw that coming towards you, you'd kind of shit your pants and go, oh dear, I'm probably going to die. Um, transforming him is a simple little task again. These two guns, uh, you put them together like that. And uh, Skullgrin can hold them upside down in that mode as his kind of double barrel guns. Uh, we'll just transform Skullgrin's robot mode now. Again, this is child's play to transform pretenders. We'll give him his guns as well. Oops, there it is. And that is Skullgrin in uh, in his robot mode. Oh, what's he like compared? See, all of them are about the same size. This is what I was saying. All of them are about the same size and look very similar, apart from, you know, slight, very, very slight differences, like in the transformation. But essentially, they're all pretty similar. Um, 
bad points about this character. The head doesn't move at all. The head is in a completely fixed place. Uh, and when you move the legs, his entire uh, kind of body moves as well. Because this bit is supposed to like form the main bulk of his body there. But obviously when you move his leg, it takes a whole chunk out of it. And he doesn't bend at the knee either. So he's got a lot less movement than Cloudburst does. Um, but personally, I like this one a lot more, mainly because he's got two giant-ass guns. And he's a Decepticon, and I'm a big Con fan. Um, and I've always been a more more keen on tanks. So, again, I prefer a big tank with lots of guns on than uh, a jet that has one gun on it. Uh, detail is, is quite nice compared to Cloudburst, which just had a lot of um, the plastic kind of pushed in to make up different shapes. Um, Skullgrin has a lot more detailing like around the legs you've got the kind of tank treads and around the back you've got these uh, little circles with indentations on it as well uh, for a bit of extra detail which is quite nice. Uh, so Skullgrin I prefer a lot more than um, I mean it doesn't look right without his belt on. Uh, then Cloudburst, but again, um, Pretenders are in a quiet taste, and I wouldn't spend a lot on either of them. I didn't mention how much I spent on Cloudburst. For a complete cl uh, Cloudburst, I spent about £8, and for a complete Skullgrin with his box, I paid about £15, I think. It was a while ago. Um, I'm, you know, I'm wanting to get Bludgeon, and I'm wanting to get... Um, Thunderwing, but they're impossible to find. You can find Bludgeon, but he's never complete. And I'd only go for them if they were complete. It's not worth it otherwise. So, um, again, thanks for watching, and uh, my third review uh, will be coming up pretty soon, I think. So, thanks again.